The more things change, the more they stay the same. You know, this old saying definitely describes the 43-year history of Dilscombe's Memorial High School. Oh, the building may look a little more worn. The gymnasium on the hill is a recent and much-needed addition. The faces and the fashions of the students are new, but the basics of life at Dilscombe's have changed very little. Students still look to their teachers for knowledge. Teachers still take strength from the enthusiasm of their students. Administrators still deal with the headaches of everyday tasks of running a high school. Parents still see their children's education as their highest priority. And this community still feels the effect of a small school sitting on a hill alone, dignified, a legacy of hopes and dreams of the many, many people who pass through its doors. The more things change, the more they stay the same. In 1954, in its second year of existence, the little school on the hill made it to the big show, winning its first and only trip to the Sweet 16. In 1992, only three years before closing its doors, the school, with an enrollment of less than 500, won its first and only state championship in the All-A Classic, a showcase of the talent that can be found in the smaller Kentucky schools. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Did you know that over 218 students with the last name Combs have passed through the doors of Dills Combs High School? It seems appropriate that Dills Combs has graduated more Combs than students with any other last name. Followed closely behind are Caudles with 129, Brashear and Cornet with 100 each. Many other families have had large numbers of students graduate from Dills Combs Memorial. Some of the teachers at Dills taught both the parent and the child in some families. But we've also seen many new additions to the close-knit community, and they were welcomed with open arms. They brought with them fresh ideas and new attitudes, and they blended those with what they found here. Together, the old family names and the new arrivals formed a warm, caring, and loving environment, which Dills Combs Memorial and its students flourished. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Some of our favorite teachers still live here in our community. Names like Rebecca Toby, Mary Ann Hawkham, and Billy Combs will never be forgotten because they were teachers who truly touched the lives of their students. They are the legends of Dills Combs High School, teachers who worked so hard and cared so much, who demanded the respect of their students and got it because they earned it. And other teachers like Lionel Williams, who have passed on, still hold places dear to our hearts. Because teaching the young people of our community was so important to them, it became important to all of us. The effects that all these wonderful teachers had on the students of Dills Combs will never be fully realized because we often never realize the influence that a person may have had on our lives. Whether it be in our choice of career or our increased self-esteem or the way we choose to raise our children, the influence that the teachers of Dills Combs Memorial High School have had on us will go with us throughout our lifetimes. The more things change, the more they stay the same. You know, fashions come and go, and come and go again. Whether it be blue jeans and bobby socks or mini skirts and high heels, it's been in vogue at Dills Combs at least a couple of times in its 43-year history. Short hair, long hair, burrs, ponytails, slicked back or frizzed out. We've seen it all here at Dills Combs, and most likely we've seen it more than once. Leather jackets or letter jackets, trench coats or raincoats, whatever style was current was seen in the hallways of our beloved school. Yes, the more things change, the more they do stay the same. As you watch this video, the truth in these words will become apparent to you. At Dills Combs, change signaled progress and work being done, and dedication to making one school the best it could possibly be. But in these changes, we often found ourselves returning to the basic truths about our school and our community and our way of life. And the truth we most often came up with was that we wouldn't have traded our history, our legacy, or our school, Dills Combs Memorial High, for any other on earth. Because in the end, the changes and the sameness were what made our little school on the hill so unique, so special, and so much a part of our lives and memories. The history of Dills Combs High School basketball begins and ends with a bang. The doors of Dills Combs Memorial High School opened in 1952 with a young, talented basketball coach, Warren Cooper. 
In just two years, he led his team to the only Sweet 16 showing that Dulles Combs High School has ever made. In the 1960s, our basketball teams began competing in various local invitational tournaments and winning them. They won the Perry County Invitational Tournament in 1961 and again in 62. In 1975, our basketball legacy continued when Dills Combs High School captured the 54th District Tournament title. In 1980, we were runners-up in the district and in 82, won the Mountain Coal Classic Tournament. In 1984, our team advanced to regional play and in 1987, Dills Combs defeated Buckhorn High School in its own gym, the first game held in Whitaker Athletic Center. In the 1990s, Dills Combs reigned supreme winning the district title and becoming regional runners-up in one of those heartbreaking what could have been regional championship games. Heston Beverly went to the bench with a sprained ankle in the first quarter and watched as his team made a run for the trophy, but it was not to be. However, in the 1992-93 year, things were to take a different turn. Dils Combs went on an 18-game winning streak and brought home its first-ever state championship in the All-A Classic. Dils' own Kavanaugh Trent and Kevin Campbell were members of the all-tournament team, and Heston Beverly was named most valuable player of the tournament. In a series of events that just wasn't supposed to happen, Dils Combs defeated the previous year's Sweet 16 winner in the quarterfinal game and went on to win the tournament in a heart-stopping down-to-the-wire game with Fulton County. Under the direction of Coach Charles Minks and with former Coach Warren Cooper on the bench as well, it was bound to happen. As you can see, the Dills Combs Panthers came in and went out with a roar. <laughs> Girls basketball has its own story to tell at Dills Combs. The program began in 1975 with Harvey Combs in the head coach position. In only seven years, Dills Combs achieved such feats as defeating M.C. Napier, who at the time was ranked 11th in the state and moving in on the traditional regional finalist to bring home the runners-up trophy. In 1984 and 85, the girls again advanced to the regional tourney, and in 1987, they again took the runners-up title with such memorable players as Stella Kilburn and Lietta Cummings, the first Bills Combs graduate to play basketball for a major university. Coach Doug Campbell must have been extremely proud of this group of dedicated girls. In the late 80s, then-girls coach Charles Minks led his team to a regional runners-up title in the girls' All-A Classic. Though Dills Combs girls basketball has only been in place for 20 years, the girls who participated managed to bring much pride to the small mountain school with the big winning tradition. Cheerleading has been a part of Dills Combs since the school first opened. From squads which consisted of three to five members to squads with a dozen girls, from long skirts and sweaters to the now traditional short skirt with pleats. Dills Combs Memorial's cheerleading squad has seen many changes along the way. The cheerleading squads of the 1950s and 60s purpose was to support the team and encourage the crowd to cheer their team on. By the 70s, cheerleading was becoming more competitive, with cheerleaders working to build stunts which were higher and more creative than the opposing teams. By the 1980s, gymnastics became an integral part of a good cheerleading squad. And by the 90s, it was a necessity. In 1992, Dills Combs had a squad that combined all of these needed skills to form one of the best cheerleading squads in the school's history. From winning their camp competition to competing for the first time ever at the national level in Dallas, Texas, to winning the All-A State cheerleading title, this team never missed a beat. Since then, Dills Combs cheerleading squads have continued to win their camps and perform on a national level. The 1994-95 squad even performed live in front of a crowd of 65,000 at the Georgia Dome during the Peach Bowl pregame and halftime shows. And through it all, one thing stayed constant. The main purpose of the Dills Combs cheerleading squad was always to support the team and lead the crowd. And that was as it should be. a short-lived softball club in the 50s, the first competitive team was formed in 1979. The girls on these squads worked hard and still managed to have fun. 
Though they had some tough times of finding coaches, people like John Gorley, Joanne Day, and Eddie Campbell, teachers and parents alike, came through to give these girls the only thing they asked for, the opportunity to participate in a sport and represent Dillscombe's Memorial High School to the people who helped make this possible a warm, heartfelt thanks. Dills Combs Baseball made its first appearance in the late 1950s. The baseball team, too, saw troubled times, sometimes struggling to even put a team on the field, one season with as few as nine players. But they continued to work, to build, and by the late 1980s, had found their way into regional tournament play. With hard-hitting players like Chad Alexander, the Dills Combs baseball team, coached by a former Dills Combs baseball player himself, Doug Brashear, became known as one to be reckoned with. In the 1990s, with the pitching expertise of players such as Kevin Campbell and Kavanaugh Trent, the Dills Combs baseball team advanced in 1993 and 1994 to the final game of the region, bringing home the runners-up trophies in both cases. Though they were disappointed themselves, their fans and coaches, Kevin Duff and Dave No, were proud of the accomplishments of these two teams. And to those sentiments, we could add that even in the years when things were tough, our young men at Dulce Combs handled it with the attitude that no matter what happened, they were a part of America's favorite pastime. And that's what it was really all about, playing the game. Our track team saw its beginnings in the 1960s and first achieved fame with its female runners in 1977. In that year, Aveline Farler and Paula Brashear became the first members of the Dills Combs track team, male or female, to advance to state competition. The next year, the girls' mile relay team advanced to the state level. It would be another eight years before we had a state competitor. And for the first time, a member of the Dills Combs boys track team, Stephen No, advanced out of the 14th region. In 1993, Shane Fugit made another mark in the history of Dills Combs boys track by qualifying to compete at the state level. And in their final year, the boys track team competed at the state level in the 5K run, bringing more honor back home to their alma mater, Dills Combs Memorial High School. the history of Dills Combs Memorial High School, the students have been eager to be involved in the many clubs and activities that the school has offered. In the early 50s, the first clubs that were offered were the Folk Club, Chemistry Club, Beta, 4-H, Drama, Glee Club, Bible Club, and YFC. Later editions included FHA, Fish and Game Club, Junior Conservation, Photo Club, and Yearbook Club. In the 60s, we added the Key Club, Newspaper Club, and Modern Dance. And in 1962, Dills Combs High School formed the first Civil Air Patrol in a Kentucky high school. The Folk Club hosted their own regional folk festival and May Day Festival. And the Bible Club formed a quiz team which took first place in the Beattyville Tournament. The 1970s were definitely the decade for our drama club. As early as 72 and 74, we had students win Best Actor in Region. By the late 70s, Dills Combs Memorial High School had become a name to be recognized at the state level as well, with actors and actresses such as Billy Gamble, Pam Hammond, Adrian Martin, Pandora Dunsell, Lynn Gregory, Jeff Adkins, Carol Cornett, Beverly Strunk, and in the 80s, Robert Smith. Dills Combs was placing consistently within the top 10 in state. In 1978, Billy Gamble placed first in state in both drama and speech and led his team to a state championship. In 1979, Dills Combs Drama took first in state again and Jeff Adkins was selected as the top actor in the state. The play Antigon with cast Beverly Strunk, Jeff Adkins, Carol Fournette and Tony Reynolds was even chosen to be filmed by KEC. The legacy of drama continued into the 80s, when both the junior high and senior high drama teams won the regional tournament in 1981, and the speech team continued to excel as well, sending as many as 11 students to state competition. 
All of these accomplishments are due in large part to the determination of drama and speech coach Carol Combs. Her students will tell you whatever she chose to do, she had to be the best. And she instilled that same drive in her students. From a Dills Combs drama student to a Dills Combs drama coach, Carol was a ferocious competitor who inspired her students to greater things. Dills Combs has been host to another very competitive club, DECA, or the Distributive Education Club. Formed in 1970, the club began entering competitions, and in 1983, Donald Smith advanced to the national level and competed in New Orleans. By the late 80s and early 90s, Dills Combs was consistently sending students to compete at the national level in places such as Florida, California, and Canada. In their last year, 14 students qualified to compete at nationals in St. Louis, Missouri. Again, the advisor of this club had much to do with its continued success. Mr. Joe Michael Brashear was another dedicated and determined teacher who spent the extra hours after school to ensure that his students were competitive at regional and state levels. Through much hard work, he developed a program that rivaled that of any other school in the state, no matter how large. The appearance of Dills Combs High School's distributive education students at the national level has come to be expected, sometimes even taken for granted. But we would like to take this opportunity to thank these students for the recognition they have brought to us. Other clubs that were added to the curriculum at Dills Combs in the 70s included World Affairs, Creative Writing, FBLA, and the Math Club. In the late 80s, Dills Combs added its now infamous Pole Cat Pep Club. This student organized group dressed in jams and t-shirts and put palm trees in the bleachers during ball games. Other well-known pep clubs included the Ultimate Warriors and the All-A Pep Clubs of the early 90s. Of course, there were many other clubs that were added and dropped throughout the years. We are sure that there are some that we have left out and some that were inadvertently omitted from the yearbooks. But rest assured that the involvement of Dills Combs students and the many clubs formed down through the years was greatly appreciated and will not be forgotten. The name Dills Combs High School has become well known in competitive academic circles across the state in its short existence. Another program developed in the 1980s excelled under the expertise of Carol Combs coaching. The team clawed its way from near the bottom of the regional ratings in 1988 to multiple wins in regional academic league play. Governor's Cup competitions have resulted in two overall regional championships and five consecutive regional championships in the quick recall category. Advancing to the state governorship competition, Dills Combs placed three students in the top ten in language arts, ranked in the top eight in state quick recall for three years, and won third place in state quick recall in 1993. Dills' achievements in all A-class tournament play have been even more impressive. The Panthers claimed five out of six regional championships and won the all A-classic state championship in 1993. The Dills Combs academic team owes much of its success to the support and dedication of its coaches, Carol Combs, a Dills Combs teacher, and Robert Campbell, an engineer with Kentucky River Cold. Their hard work and determination brought that winning tradition to the area of academic competition and brought even more pride to the small school on the hill. The 1970s saw the beginnings of the Dills Combs Memorial High School Band. In 1972, the band building was constructed. Next, a radiothon and telethon were hosted to raise money for the band's marching uniforms. Our first band director was John Cox, and he developed a band program that was first rate, gaining notoriety throughout the 14th region and capturing top honors at many competitions. During the 1970s, majorettes performed with the band leading them in parades and entertaining crowds at basketball games. Our band continued its success into the 80s as it participated in more competitions and parades. In the 1990s, under the direction of Christy Knight, our final band marched in the Black Gold Parade, the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and many other area competitions. Another important aspect of the band has been the Flag Corps. They performed in both the parades and at games and added much to the band's performances. The 
at Dills Combs Art Department is second to none in the state of Kentucky. Lionel Williams began the tradition of excellence expected of the art students at Dills Combs, and today John Gorley continued the tradition. Over the past 15 years, the accomplishments of our art department have been phenomenal. They have won 1,353 art awards at the local, state, and national level. Dills Combs is the only school in the state of Kentucky which has made nine trips to the Sweet 16 Showcase. We have been fortunate to have talented artists who have brought home two state first place awards in sculpture and a second, third, and fourth place in painting. In the All-A State Art Show, our students have taken first place in painting, watercolor, mixed media, and pastels. At the State Fair, our students took first place in both painting and drawing. Our art department started the Lionel Williams Alice Smith Memorial Art Show and also Billy Westerfield Memorial Art Show. Our students here at Dills Combs have been honored to be visited by celebrities like Jane Alexander. The artwork produced in the Small Mountain School has been displayed in Asheville, North Carolina and New York in our own state capital and in the exhibits in Washington, D.C. The pride that these students brought to this community is undeniable. They gave us one more reason to celebrate here in the hallways of Dills Combs Memorial High School. Through the years at Dills Combs Memorial High School, various honors had been bestowed upon many of our students. In the 1950s, the greatest recognition was given to the annual King and Queen, the Festival King and Queen, and the Carnival King and Queen. During the 1955-56 school year, Dills Combs recognized its very first Mr. and Miss D.C., an honor which was continued until the very last year of the school's existence, when it was won by Shane Fugit and Misty Brashear. In the 1960s, we also added basketball, snowball, and football homecoming queens, as well as the key club sweetheart. In the 1970s, we recognized our first prom queen and prom princess, and we also began the tradition of homecoming queen and princess. Our final prom queen was Wendy Adams, and our final prom princess was Bobby Pratt. In the 1990s, we realized that the guys who were working on the prom deserved special recognition, too. So on May 6, 1995, we crowned our last prom prince, Joe Akers, and prom king, Jamie Cornett. The last homecoming queen and princess of Dills Combs High School were sisters, Misty and Kelly Brashear, an occurrence which took place only twice in the history of Dills Combs. The first time was 1983, when Cindy and Susan Evans were honored to be named the first pair of sisters to receive these awards. In time, Dills Combs High School also added traditions of nominating junior and senior class officers, class favorites, and senior superlatives. Winning any of these awards was a very prestigious achievement, and to all our former winners, we congratulate you. The greatest task faced, most would agree, in the 43-year history of Dills Combs was the building of a gymnasium. For 35 years, our students struggled without a gym. Physical education classes met outdoors. If the weather was bad, the classes met wherever they could find an empty room. Basketball teams practiced in other schools' gyms, traveling as far away as Whitesburg for practice time, getting home as late as 10 o'clock every night of the week. In 1984, a small group of concerned community members decided that enough was enough. With volunteers working in the evenings and round the clock on weekends, trees were cut, dirt was moved, and plans were made. Fundraisers were held on a regular basis to raise money for the project. Donations from other civic-minded citizens made the going a little easier. Slowly, ever so slowly, a gymnasium was taking place. A trip to Maine was arranged to choose the bleachers, and before long, our building began to look like a true athletic center. The people who were involved in its construction took the opportunity to have a few fun events in the facility before it was ready to open to the public. Pick up basketball games, Halloween and Christmas parties. A time of fellowship among those who donated so much of their time, so much of themselves. Finally it happened. The new gymnasium was complete. It was dedicated to the memory of John Whitaker, son of Elmer Whitaker. The role that Elmer Whitaker and his family played in encouraging this small group of concerned community members not to give up is something that they will always appreciate. Many people were recognized for their dedication to the students of Dills Combs High School. The first exhibition game in the gymnasium was a wonderful sight to see. Bright lights, media coverage, the first team pictures in the gym, ball players and cheerleaders. Everything was so new and so special. 
Special thanks had been given to that first group that was responsible for making that first decision to build the gymnasium for the Dills Combs High School. The president of Dills Combs Athletic Association, who did not live to see the fruits of his labor, was Pete Loudy. Members included J.R. No, Karen and the late Cecil Brown, Roger Asher, Ray Williams, Doug and John Adkins, Joe Michael Brashear, Laverne Brashear, and the late Norman Combs. Other people who were instrumental included Pauline Adkins, Ann Williams, Doris and Lanny Puget, Sarah Bashir, the late Catherine Combs, John and Ethel Adams, John C. and Irene Blair, Johnny and Linda Blair, Paulette Brashear, Jay Brashear, Albert Pratt, Sam Caudle, L.D. Gorman, and Haven King. There were many, many other individuals and many, many businesses, too numerous to list or count. But on behalf of the students of Dills Combs Memorial High School from the year 1988 on, Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for giving us a gymnasium to call home. The more things change, the more they stay the same. In its history, Dills Combs has been a catalyst in the lives of many of its students, and it has been a safe haven for them as well. It holds many secrets whispered in the hallways and guards them well. It has seen the elation of its students and shared their sorrows too. In many ways, Dills Combs Memorial is as alive and well as you or I. And as the doors close, we bid Dills Combs a final farewell. We could consider it the end of a life. Or we could realize that Dills Combs Memorial High School will continue to live as long as we hold our own memories of it close to our hearts. It is up to us, the alumni of Dills Combs Memorial High School, to keep the spirit of our school alive in our hearts. The little school on the hill with the largest legacy of all the successes and the lives of its students. After all, that's what it was all about. We close with a poem written by a 1995 senior at Dills Combs High School, Tina Napier. Yes. I stood at the doors of Dills Combs High and tried to see through the tears in my eyes. Though I love it dearly, I must confess, I saw the worst along with the best. The paint is peeling, the walls coming down, the sidewalks are broken, I look and I frown. The classrooms are empty where once students stood, though it's almost over, the memories are good. Voices from classes of long years ago, bases for softball where grass still won't grow. Sounds of the band and the old school song, cheerleaders and fans help the Panthers along. Rows of trophies so proudly won tell of student accomplishments and how they were done. And now as the last year begins to unfold, each treasured moment in my memory I'll hold. The best years of our lives, yes, I truly believe. That's why there's a lump in my throat as I grieve. Because I know that there are many others who care. A huge part of their lives is tied up right here. We have small town memories and we hold them dear. We had the best of life and it started right here. So many have gone, but they each left apart. We hold so closely deep down in our heart. Listen one last time to the sounds of the past. Think of those who helped us as our future was cast. Don't be embarrassed if the tears start to fall. Close your eyes and wonder one last time down the hall. I stand at the doors of Dills Combs High, knowing the closing days are nigh. To a few it meant nothing, but to all the rest, like me in their hearts, you bring out the best. It's been a good Looking for the warmth of the sun Gonna be a long time together And the best is yet to come I remember the beginning We were younger then Used to play in the scene We'd both pretend That was then and now, our moments come again. 